Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. We're going to give, um, allow people time to join us, and we're going to start shortly. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. We're going to give it about 30 more seconds, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. And I just want to welcome you all to the Clayton County Community Update Meeting. My name is Erica Pines and I work in external affairs for MARTA. We are so happy that you jo chose to join us this beautiful Saturday afternoon to get some exciting news about Clayton County. As we all know, we um, Clayton County residents passed a referendum in November of 2014. Once that referendum were passed, was passed, we were able to get up and running very quickly. We actually began service a few short months later, starting in March. And it's because of the leadership and the community, Clayton County community that we have had a successful partnership with the community. Given that, I want to just give a thank you to Chairman Turner and the Board of Commissioners and also all of the local municipalities and their elected officials that support MARTA. I want to um, recognize the MARTA team, which is led by our CEO and general manager, Jeff Parker. And I just also want to give a special um, shout out to our board members, Mrs. Roberta Abdul Salam and Mr. Jerry Griffin. And most importantly, I want to give um, just a thank you to all of our writers, all of our customers, all of our supporters and our stakeholders for supporting us over the past five years on this journey. And we are committed to um, Clayton County and we are committed to improving and enhancing um, service moving forward. Just so you know, we are hosting several community updates like this across with all of our jurisdictional partners. Clayton is the first one that we're hosting. So you're number one with this effort and we would love your feedback on it. Um, we want to know as we go through this um, presentation, it's gonna be broken up into two parts, which I'll explain shortly, but we, there's a question and answer box. If you guys can look at your, um, if you're using a WebEx, there's a Q&A. If you're viewing us live, you're on YouTube, you can just post questions and comments in the chat and we will get to those. We will answer questions at the end of the presentations, but if you have a question and you're viewing from WebEx, please post those in the Q&A and not the chat. And um, if you want to, we're gonna show two videos throughout this presentation. For some, if you're viewing through WebEx, the sound may be low. So if you want to um, view this presentation through YouTube, just go to itsmarta.com. That's I-T-S-M-A-R-T-A.com. And at the very top of the homepage, there's a link that says, View Clayton Meeting Live. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Thank you. We can go to the next slide. 
Okay, um, this presentation, as I mentioned, is gonna be about service, um, existing service and what we have coming forward. If you have questions about our essential service plan that we put into place around COVID, we really want to document those questions. So we ask that you email those questions to CUSSERV, that's C-U-S-T-S-E-R-V, at itsmarta.com because we want to document those um, questions so that we can see where people um, have concerns about any routes that they're looking um, to bring back. So today's program, um, I just gave you the welcome. We're gonna start off with Frank Rucker, who's our Chief of Capital Programs Planning and Innovation. And then we'll um, move to Tracy Robertson, who's gonna give some exciting um, transit system plan updates. And then we'll turn it over to the Q&A. Remember, if you have questions, don't post them in the chat if you're viewing through um, WebEx. Post them in the Q&A section. And if you're viewing through YouTube, you can just post them in the comment section. And if you want to view this presentation outside of the WebEx, if you join on WebEx, just go to itsmarta.com and click the link at the top of the page. And we'll get started with Mr. Rucker. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Erica. Uh, as, as as Erica said, my name is Frank Rook, and I am Chief of Capital Programs at MARTA, primarily responsible for the implementation of what we call our State of Good Repair Program and our expansion program. So very happy to be with you this afternoon to pre prevent, I'm sorry, to present an overview of this, this exciting program. You know, a lot of people, you know, we are on the verge of implementing uh, a, a very ambitious program, I would say. Uh, we haven't done anything like this within the authority for some time. I mean, it's comparable to going back to when MARTA originally, uh, in, in 1980, began to, to basically build a system as you see it today. The last big expansion for MARTA was probably 1996 when we went up um, up the 400 corridor and, and finished the, the North Spring Station there. So. Uh, our agenda today, okay, we'll, uh, we will discuss what the MARTA 2040 program is. We'll take a quick up look and give you an update on the COVID-19. Uh, we'll talk about our Clayton County Justice Transit Hub. We'll, we'll also spend some time discussing shelters and amenities and the multi-purpose maintenance facility that's to come in as, as part of this program. So let's go to the next slide there. So. MARTA 2040 Transforming Transit. And so as we look at expansion programs as well as state of good repair, state of good repair, we tend to basically look at and prioritize projects on a 10-year package. So basically every 10 years we decide what the authority will focus on. You know, in terms of actually expansion projects, we take a little bit longer because of the FTA process. And some of these projects are pretty long. So so if you're going through an FTA process looking for federal funding, we tend to, to basically go through what I call an initiation process where we look at various alternatives analysis, um, look at various different concepts associated with, with, with the corridor, and eventually we get to what we call an LPA. Then we'll go into detail planning where we look at every aspect of the corridor before we transition into what we call a final design. Um, and, and then, of course, once we finish the final design, we will get to construction. And, you know, these are very big projects, I will say. In Clayton County alone, we are looking somewhere between one to $2 billion of work in the actual uh, year of construction, that estimate. City of Atlanta, we got something that's probably two and a half times that size. We're waiting for our other fellow jurisdictions that, that are part of the MARTA system whether it be Fulton County or DeKalb County to finalize their transit plans, and, but they will be coming on board with, with expansion programs to, to basically be implemented through this 2040 program. So we will, this, and we can, we can truly say that in the next 20 years, we will transform transit within this region. So I mentioned state of good repairs. That represents the authority's ongoing commitment to maintaining, improving the system as well as overall customer experience. You know, what does that mean? State of good repair, we, we are in the process of upgrading our current system. So one of our major projects in state of good repairs is actually we will basically be purchasing and, and operating 
brand new rail cars. So when you look at the rail cars that, that basically run on the heavy rail system today, some of those cars date back to the first uh, acquisition, which is all the way back to uh, 1980. So, so that that fleet needs basically replacing. You know, it, uh, we, we're also doing work on the various systems and upgrading systems, whether it be tunnel ventilation, uh, basically what we call emergency trip stations, et cetera, you know, that to maintain the safety level that's required to operate a system of this magnitude. We, we are in the process of upgrading the track. Uh, some of that track has been in place, again, 40 years. And, you know, it's just like anything else, whether you're on a roadway, that physical infrastructure has to be basically replaced uh, during the incremental time, and the rail is somewhere between 30 and 40 years. Next bullet, we talk about the expansion effort. And as I mentioned, it's the largest effort uh, to put expansion, new, new projects in place in the authority since, since they actually built the authority back in 1980. Um, and I, I already talked about the various efforts going on in each jurisdiction, so I won't spend a whole lot of time with that. You know, but again, I will close on the 2040 effort. It will transform transit across this region. So we really appreciate your support and, and we'll, we'll, we'll continually bring you updates on this expansion program as we, as we complete efforts. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, let's, let's essential service arouse. We're gonna give an update on, on the COVID-19. So due to the COVID-19 pandemic, of course, everybody knows we implemented what we call essential service plan, which was launched in April. So the initial plan maintained 40 critical bus routes and one circulator. So by the end of September, we anticipate that we will have added eight additional routes to those essential services. You know, and, and basically deciding what was an essential service, our plan basically made a priority that we had transportation to the hospitals, so 17 hospitals in the region, 22 urgent care facilities, 85 grocery stores, and 16 job centers and industrial hubs. And the modified service enabled an increase in service frequency to maximize social distancing and enhance safety for our customers and employees. So we appreciate everybody's patience as we've gone through, again, Safety is, is, is job one at MARTA, and we, we basically came up with a plan that we feel has basically illustrated that. Let's go to the next slide there. So continuing with our essential service routes, COVID-19, you know, we used an equitable data-driven process to discern, determine those essential routes. Of Clayton's nine routes, only three routes have been temporarily suspended. We did notice a a decrease of nearly 50% in Clayton's daily ridership since the pandemic. And one thing, we are constantly monitoring the data pertaining to COVID-19 pandemic and, and assessing service levels as we go through and, and basically make a determination of how we will add service back, back to the network. Let's go, let's go to the next slide there. Okay. So we got the Clayton County Justice Center, you know. So the, the, transfer, the transfer station st serves, serves as a hub for Clayton bus routes and approximately 800 daily riders. Phase one of the transit center consisted of basically the implementation of shelters and transit information boards. We, we put park ride spaces there at the transit center, as well as we improved the, the, the pedestrian walkways and crosswalks around the center. You know, if you may recall, uh, basically, everybody pretty much walked on, on grass, no protection from the rain, et cetera. So we, we have made that, that stop to service that many daily riders a lot more, more pleasant uh, as you go through your daily journey. So the, 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 the transit center opened up in, in July 2020, and we are planning a phase two, which basically will construct a permanent facility, uh, and a target for that facility will be in 2020. 23, and of course, one of the features will be that you'll be able to purchase all the breeze materials as well as digital signage and basically the construction of permanent shelters. Uh, and we're really beginning the planning process to basically make sure we're, we're tracking for that permanent installment. Let's go to the next one. Let's, let's take a look at this video. 
of the transit. We're so excited to do our first project here in Clayton County at the Justice Center's Transit Hub. This facility serves about 800 customers a day, three bus routes. Well, today is a great day in Clayton County simply because this transit hub is being open. This bus stop has creativity to it. This stop is going to be somewhere where the citizens can come, wait on a bus, but enjoy their surroundings. So it's a good day in Clayton County. I designed this piece uh, with the help from Marta Arafau to, to try to produce something for the community, the Community Paint Day. You know, even in times like this, I just I wanted people to, to have a sense of moving together and also standing together and whatever comes. Today is significant in that this is the first transit hub that MARTA has placed in the county. The citizens are engaged in this process. We are continually trying to push forward to meet the needs of the citizens in this community. We have a lot more in store and we're just so excited to serve so many customers with great amenities, keeping them out of the elements in the cold weather, the warm weather, and providing a safe environment. And we're just so excited to serve our customers here in Clayton County. And I would just like to second as Jeff, Jeff and, and Chairman Turner said, we do have a lot more in store to, to service our customers down in Clayton County. So you, you all just stay tuned. It's coming. All right, let's go to the next one. So let's take a look at, at our shelters and amenities program. So uh, a little, a little bit, just, just basically, I'm sure you've seen this slide before, but uh, just our selection process. So we we base our selection of shelters based on ridership. So you see the critical our standards are for shelters is 25 or more daily boardings for the shelters, 15 or more for benches. We take a look at land uses, so those lifeline facilities, senior citizens facilities, hospitals, government offices, et cetera, take priority. We, we do consider local input, so we get requests from, public elected, from the public, elected officials and stakeholders. We also try to coordinate with local projects, you know, meaning that if somebody's doing a roadway project and we want to put a shelter, we definitely want to make sure we coordinate that, that installment so the project won't take the shelter out, you know. And then we do field evaluations that verify constructability, available space, utilities, obstructions, and basically whether or not it's planned to go on private properties, which we, of course, have to get consent to actually do that. Let's look at the next slide. So quickly about our construction process, once we do finalize the site selection, uh, we actually basically do what we call problem solving. So, so we'll basically do an initial evaluation of, of those physical constraints that were mentioned, you know, private property issues, et cetera. Um, then we'll start a survey and design process to, to, to develop the final designs for those respective locations. We have to basically uh, obtain permits, so whether it's local, local governments or uh, on Georgia Department of Transportation, right away we have to get a permit from, from those respective air groups and then we'll basically, once we obtain a permit, we will basically construct the amenity. Let's go and, and give you an update of what we did this year. Uh, when Oscar Way. Oh, I'm sorry. A very important aspect of a transit system is bus shelters. I'm happy to say that Clayton County is receiving more and more bus shelters every month. One of the most important things is to make sure that our citizens are protected from the elements. So I'm happy to say that MARTA is working hard to provide more and more shelters throughout Clayton County. So stay tuned, there's more to come. So I, I like what the chairman said, there are more to come. Um, so an indication, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so so we 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 are looking. We we have basically started the contract to install a thousand amenities throughout our whole jurisdiction, just the complete jurisdiction over the next five years. And of that, Clayton Tar Clayton County is targeted to get 150 bus stop amenities over the five-year period. 
So we made a commitment in year one to install 30 new bus stops. Those have been installed. Uh, in, 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 in calendar year 21, 2021, we will add a 30 additional bus stop amenities. And just to tell you where we are currently with the inst installation of the 30 in 2020, Clayton has 48 shelters for 635. Now, uh, as you add, um, that'll be 120 more to the 48, 168 to the 635. And of course, I anticipate we'll have other bus routes so at some point we'll have about 25 percent of the bus stops, you know. Which I, I saw an interesting stat that carries somewhere around, and, and we can I can finalize this number, but it will carry it will service somewhere between 60 to 70 percent of the passengers that take the bus in Clayton County with that percent of shelters. So again, focus on those daily boardings and putting those shelters where people are actually getting on the bus is a, a critical criteria as we go forward. There. Let's see the next slide. Okay, so we've already begun again back to the planning process of the, the maintenance the maintenance facility. So that ops maintenance facility that we're gonna build in Clayton County. Elements are we will have bus maintenance and storage. They will house our paratransit and mobility vehicles basically within the region. Uh, we have we have a model police precinct, it will have administrative and training spaces, and there's potential for expansion. This is quite a quite a project, by the way. All right, so, so a bus maintenance facility is shown over there on the right side. So what we're looking for in overall, so in, increasing overall uh, system efficiency. Basically, we, we'll be seeing lower operating costs to the system. So that lower deadhead cost is a major thing because the, the, the parking facility be right adjacent to the bus routes. We will look to expand paratransit, the service within, the, in, within Clayton County. There's a potential that it will support alternative fuels. We are now evaluating, so primarily our buses are, are diesel fuel as well as compressed natural gas, and we're looking to now incorporate electric vehicles into our fleet. And last but not least, we'll, the investment in basically of the facility in Clayton County, we're looking to create jobs in Clayton County. So, you know, not only construction jobs, but new, new transit facility jobs locally. So staffing those those um, that facility with local hires is a major thing there. All right, so let's go. Next slide. So with that, I appreciate you all giving me the time to kind of go through some of these these very ambitious expansion initiatives. I'll turn it over to our project manager for Clayton County uh, planning efforts, Tracy Roberson, and I think she's accompanied by Jennifer, our consultant Jennifer Heber. So Tracy, take it away. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Frank, for all of the details of everything that's going on in Clayton County. Uh, greetings again, all of you Clayton County residents, leadership, elected officials, and major stakeholders. I'm Tracy Roberson, and I am very, very excited to have this opportunity to share with you this Saturday afternoon. And I definitely thank you for taking the time to come um, with us today to review the plans for improving, extending, and building out the complete transit network, which will serve the citizens of Clayton for years to come. So just a little bit of background, MARTA has been diligently designing new recommended transit investments in Clayton County. And this presentation you will see today will focus on the proposed recommendations from the Clayton County Transit System Plan. These proposed transit investments have the potential to serve and benefit more than 260,000 residents and major employment centers of Clayton County, as well as others in neighboring Fulton, DeKalb, Fed, and Henry County. So in this presentation, I will explain the purpose of the Clayton Transit System Plan. Um, discuss the previous community engagement efforts, which helped MARTA to frame these recommendations. We'll also compare MARTA's, um, what we call pre-COVID MARTA service with the proposed um, recommendations. And then we'll give you all an idea of um, what are the next steps to complete this process. So let's go ahead and get started by um, just having an opportunity to just talk about what is a transit system plan. So this transit system plan actually involves exploring 
various transit improvements and providing solutions to improve Clayton County's transportation, mobility, accessibility, and connectivity to the Atlanta region, while also providing greater access to jobs, providing congestion relief, environmental benefits, and bolstering economic development within the county. The Clayton Transit System Plan is designed to create a 30-year vision for transit improvements, which address the future needs of the county. This plan creates a list of prioritized transportation projects and identifies um, those which fall in what we consider a short range and then those that fall mid to long range. And it also offers a redesigned and improved bus network which will complement the two high capacity corridors, one serving the eastern side of the county and one serving the western side of the county. And we do also have some new elements that we are introducing. In particular, this plan um, um, features the addition of mobility hubs um, to the transit network, along with the addition of high capacity service. And when we talk about high capacity service, we are referring to several elements. We're talking about arterial rapid transit, which is denoted as ART, bus rapid transit, which we call BRT, and commuter rail, which is coined CRT. <coughs> So let's go ahead and um, take a look at some of these um, new elements in a little bit more um, detail. Um, next slide. All right, great, great. So um, the first element I want to talk about are the mobility hubs. Um, Frank had an opportunity to share a little bit and um, you saw that the Justice Center hub has recently opened. Um, just as an explanation of what the uh, mobility hubs are. Um, they are small transit stations that may be easily integrated within the community, and they actually offer connections and transfer points to multiple um, transit routes that connect there. Uh, mobility hubs may also have additional features like ticket vending machines, um, bus shelters with passenger seating, trash receptacle, and some may also be accompanied by um, park and ride spaces as well. So the next element uh, I'd like to um, introduce and share is arterial rapid transit, so better known as ART. This is a type of enhanced transit service consisting of a network of fast and frequent transit routes on high density mixed use corridors. ART um, is uh, useful on corridors that's such as US 41 or Tara Boulevard in Clayton County. Some of ART's characteristics include more frequent service with buses arriving every 15 minutes or less, operating at higher speeds than the local bus, transit signal priority, enhanced stops, and queue jump lanes. Queue jump lanes are um, short, um, dedicated transit only lanes that allow for the buses to enter the traffic in a priority um, position before the regular vehicles can enter into the traffic. And all of these features that I've shared um, really helps um, to improve the overall bus travel time. So another element um, that's being um, proposed that um, we are considering as uh, new to Clayton is bus rapid transit or BRT. And this bus mode um, uh, is designed to offer many of the same benefits that you um, see in rail, but it can be constructed at a much lower cost. So to reduce the impacts of congestion, BRT vehicles may operate in a designated transit lane for buses only. And this also allows for higher speeds and fewer delays than the regular bus service. As mentioned, um, BRT infrastructure is definitely much, much less expensive to build as compared to um, train. So another feature is that BRT vehicles are often articulated and this allows for a greater capacity. We know that uh, we have high ridership in the Clayton area and with the BRT and the articulated buses, we can move uh, people, a greater number of people um, at a faster rate. And also these buses are usually more stylized than the regular local buses. They usually will have their own special um, vehicle branding. 
So like ART, the BRT frequency is also um, typically 15 minutes or less. And the distances between the stations are typically greater than the local bus service. That's another feature that allows the buses to move um, much more rapidly through the corridor because you don't have as many um, bus stops. And overall, uh, the bus rapid transit is fast and frequent, and it definitely provides a very, very uh, much real like um, user experience for the customers. So um, let's just go ahead and um, take this time to share um, public and stakeholder engagement. Um, because we definitely did not do this in a silo. Uh, we began the Clayton Transit System Plan back in 2018 and have used a number of methods to engage stakeholders and the public in the creation of the plan. Um, input was received from citizens during open houses and public meetings. MARTA received input from advisory committees such as the Clayton Citizens Advisory Group, um, we got input from the stakeholder and technical advisory committees, um, as well as organizations such as uh, the Chamber of Commerce, Organized Clayton, Clayton State University, and many, many, many more. Um, additionally, MARTA has been briefing the Clayton County Board of Commissioners on a consistent and ongoing basis. So we have received input from a broad base of stakeholders to create and design the recommendations. Um, I do want to say that MARTA and Clayton stakeholders, um, including representatives from each and every jurisdictions, we work together hand in hand during multiple um, workshops in um, 2018 and 2019. And we use these hands-on workshops to get real data to get a real clear understanding of the needs for the transit riders in Clayton. And all of this um, input has led us to the recommendations that you will see here today. So let's take a moment to compare what we're calling the existing MARTA service to the proposed transit system um, recommendations. So we are calling um, what you see here on the uh, map, the pre-COVID program bus network, um, which consists of nine routes. Again, we're calling this pre-COVID because as you are aware, uh, several uh, reductions have been pl uh, 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 placed that Frank spoke about earlier. Um, so uh, once MARTA returns to full service, there will be nine routes. Um, so. Also, you will see here that routes 197 and route 198 are shown with an asterisk because these two were slated to be implemented in August, but due to COVID, they have been delayed. But immediately following COVID, we will have routes 197 and 198, which will bring us to the full pre-COVID network of nine bus routes. So that is what we have, what we're calling what we have today. Now let's move on and let's look at what is being proposed. So let's talk about phase one of the proposed recommendations. So for phase one, we are looking at two ART routes. Two ART routes have been created to offer greater mobility to Clayton County. The first ART route will connect the College Park Marta Station to the South Lake Mall area via the city of Riverdale. And the next ART route will offer enhanced um, transit service from East Point Marta Station to the Clayton Justice Center. Uh, and that is mostly along US 41 or um, Terra Boulevard. So the next thing we'll take a look at are the nine completely redesigned local bus routes. So the redesigned bus routes will continue to serve Clayton County, but will offer greater frequency um, than the current local um, bus. Now, I'm going to ask Jennifer Hibbert. Um, she is with the MARTA consultant team. Jennifer, if you could take a moment here and just um, share some of the operating characteristics for the nine redesigned routes before we move on, please. Sure. Thank you, Tracy, very much. Can you guys hear me OK? Yes, hear you loud and clear. Okay. Okay, perfect. Just wanted to make sure. 
Um, so I'd like to detail, as Tracy said, I'd like to detail some of the local bus service that's being proposed. The local bus routes have been, as she noted, redesigned to complement the high capacity transit projects as well as offer more frequent service. Um, and Route 191, I'll start with it. Route 191 would operate from a mobility hub um, that Tracy mentioned earlier, that's one of the new elements. Um, it will offer service from a mobility hub located in Forest Park to the Clayton County Justice Center mobility hub along State Route 85, Flint River Road, and US 1941 or Terra Boulevard. Let me bring in Route 192, uh, would operate between the Forest Park Mobility Hub, the Justice Center Mobility Hub, and Lovejoy along US 1941 Terra Boulevard, and will offer circulator service through the city of Lovejoy. Route 193 would operate transit service from the Forest Park Mobility Hub to the Justice Center Mobility Hub located along Forest Parkway and State Route 54 or Jonesboro Road. Route 194 would operate from the Forest Park Mobility Hub to the Justice Center Mobility Center running north along US 1941 Terra Boulevard for a short distance to Charles W. Grant and then into the International Terminal at Hartsville Jackson International Airport. The route would then serve the eastern side of the county, stop at a mobility hub that's proposed for the South Lake Mall area before finally ending at the Justice Center Mobility Hub. Route 195 is an east-west route serving the northern section of Clayton County, passing through the Forest Park Mobility Hub on the way to the College Park Mobility Hub. Route 196 would operate service from the College Park MARTA station to a new mobility hub in Riverdale via US 29 or Roosevelt Highway, Old National, and then Riverdale Road. Route 197 is also primarily an east-west route from the Mobility Hub in Riverdale to the Stockbridge area, traversing through the central section of Clayton County. Route 198 would operate service from a Mobility Hub in Riverdale to the South Lake Mall Mobility Hub via State Route 138 and 54. And finally, Route 199 would act as a circulator loop from the South Lake Mobility Hub to a park and ride lot that's located in the Stockbridge area on the eastern side of the county. Tracy, I'm going to turn it back over to you to talk a little bit more about these mobility hubs that people have heard me mentioning a lot. Awesome. Thank you so much for the details on how the routes are going to be redesigned. So, um, again, we in this first phase, we do have four new transit facilities. This includes three mobility hubs, one in Forest Park, the South Lake Mall area, and one at Clayton Justice Center. And we also have a park and ride lot in Lovejoy. The South Lake Mall and Clayton Justice Center mobility hubs will offer additional parking for transit patrons. Additionally, a new park and ride lot in Lovejoy will also allow transit users from the southern section of the county, along with people who are traveling from outside of the county, to quickly access the redesigned um, transit system in Clayton County. So that concludes um, phase one. Now we're going to take a look at what we have coming as part of the phase two. So during phase two, the College Park, the South Lake Mall ART route will be upgraded and converted to bus rapid transit service. This will be done with the addition of transit only lanes along portions of the um, high capacity transit route to allow more reliable service and permit travelers to see more travel savings time. And then we will also introduce a new ART route, which will be implemented from Riverdale to the Clayton Justice Center along State Route 138 and US 41. Now we will also during this phase have additional transit facilities to be added. Um, there will be a mobility hub with parking in Riverdale and a park and ride lot in the Stockbridge area located adjacent um, to I-75, and we are calling um, this location um, Clayton East. Um, Jennifer, would you like to share a little bit more about the um, um, hubs overall? Sure. Um, so each of the mobility hubs you'll see has been placed strategically throughout the county to offer greater operational efficiencies and also expand the transit spatial coverage in Clayton County. 
At least two of the routes will circulate through each of the mobility hubs, but most of the hubs will have four routes circulating through them, and some have even up to six routes passing through them. That has allowed us to shorten the routes, having them terminate at the mobility hubs, so you can tell that these mobility hubs will be an important part in the future of the redesigned transit system in Clayton County. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. So uh -huh. that concludes um, phase two. So now let's look at the full suite, um, including phase one and phase two. What you see here um, represents the full build out of the plan. So in totality, we are introducing one BRT route. We are introducing two ART routes. We are also including a proposed high capacity corridor, which is along State Route 54 and along the Norfolk Southern Corridor. Uh, this is under analysis for the commuter rail, which I mentioned earlier. Now, I know a lot of people want a lot of details about the commuter rail, um, but that is still moving forward and we need an entire hour or two to sit with you to give you those updates. So definitely more to come on that um, soon on the analysis that's been complete and the process that Frank spoke about earlier. We are moving along that um, uh, federal process for commuter rail. The other portion of the complete plan are the nine completely restructured local bus routes that we have shared with you. And there are a total of six new transit facilities, including both mobility hubs as well as parking rides. So with that, I'd like for us to take a side-by-side -side look at what we have uh, now, which we're calling pre-COVID versus what we have when we have the full build out of uh, phase one and phase two of the transit system plan. So you can see here, um, the design will be much more robust than we have today. So if we can go to the next slide, we'd like to compare and contrast the existing um, versus the proposed. So if you take a look at the existing, all of the existing bus routes currently terminate at a MARTA station and there are no designated transfer facilities for intra-county travel. And MARTA does not currently offer high capacity transit service within the county. Uh, the frequencies for local buses vary, but a lot of them can be up to 60 minutes. And generally MARTA only offers one route per corridor. And finally, if a transit passenger only wants to travel within the county, they must transfer several times to reach their destination. And that means lengthy trips for uh, intra-county travel. And that has definitely been taken into consideration for the new proposed um, service recommendations. So if we look at the proposed service recommendations, uh, we see that the new bus routes um, actually terminate at the mobility hubs and at MARTA rail, MARTA rail stations. This allows the bus routes to be shorter with more frequent service. The recommendations also feature up to four mobility hubs designed for quick, efficient transfers. The system plan will introduce three high capacity, um, high frequency BRT and ART. And um, the local bus frequencies are actually cut in half or greater, which I I know that is definitely something that everyone is um, very, very excited about. The new recommendations co consolidate service along certain corridors at the hubs and the proposed recommendations offer a ability to transfer to the MARTA rail um, at a very higher service frequency. So the proposed recommendations also now have some similarities to the existing. So if we look at the similarities, um, the geographic reach um, at, as the existing is very similar. And as well, the proposed recommendations may be implemented with a similar operating cost as compared to the existing, which means um, basically um, you'll get a better Clayton transit network with minimal financial impact to MARTA and Clayton. So with that, um, I'd like to share some next steps. So 
we are going through the process now of sharing this information with the public, with you, Clayton County. We have gotten information and input from you at the beginning. Now we are sharing and we still want to get your feedback based on the recommendations that we have uh, come up with and provided to you today. Now, this is not your only opportunity to see this plan. In fact, we are coming back and we are going to have uh, additional um, engagement. We are going to be gathering additional information in October. And after that, once we get all of the information, we will finalize this plan and move it along for um, final approval through MARTA's um, executive management. Next slide. Again, we definitely welcome your feedback concerning um, the recommendations. And you will have an opportunity to ask questions here today. But in the event we are not able to get to your question, please feel free to email us at Clayton at itsmarta.com or you may call us at 404-848-5299 to leave your comments, your questions, or your concerns about the Clayton Transit System Plan. And if you will, please submit your comments on or before October 15th, and then we will be coming back to you, like I mentioned earlier, for an additional public meeting and during this meeting, it will focus centrally on the system plan, and that way we can have a much deeper dive and much more time to review what we have shared with you here today. So again, thank you for uh, attending this webinar. I hope we did not go too fast, but we definitely want your input, and um, please share it with us in the, um, the chat and Q&A, as Erica has mentioned. And MARTA continues to look forward to our partnership and servicing the great citizens of Clayton County. And with that, I am going to turn it back over to you, Erica Pines. Okay, um, this um, presentation was good. We haven't gotten a lot of questions. I just saw um, an additional one pop up. So what we'll do is I'll just go over the standard questions that we get with um, every engagement. One of the questions that we get on a daily basis is about our essential services plan um, that affected a lot of our customers that we put into place as a result of COVID. I just want to let those of you who are tuning in know that um, we take the safety of our customers and our um, employees very seriously, as Frank Rucker um, mentioned. When we started the essential services plan, we were averaging about 700 cases a day. Right now, we're averaging about 200, I mean, about 2,000 cases a day. So it's almost triple than when we started. I know it's sunny outside and things look great, but um, COVID is still alive and real, and we just want to protect our customers and our passengers. So um, one of the things that we want to know, let you guys know that our riders continue to be our number one priority. And currently, as we um, sit here today, ridership is down about 50% um, due to COVID. And if you have routes in particular that you would like to see put back into service, we want to document those. So please email those routes to cussserve at itsmarta.com. Also, we got some questions about how can we stay engaged. Um, one of the things that we want to do is um, we're going to launch a general website that would talk about all of the things that you heard today, plus more. We should be launching um, that site over the next couple of weeks, but it will be one site where the public will be able to go and just look at all the things that Marta is doing and get information about that. As Tracy mentioned, we are coming back to the public for additional public engagement. So stay tuned for those announcements. Um, MARTA did launch on Nextdoor last week. So if you're on Nextdoor, we were told that 40, 000, almost 40,000 residents in Clayton are um, on Nextdoor. So we would like you to join that platform there, follow us there because we'll keep, uh, um, keep you engaged there also. But continue to check our website, our social media, and we um, push out emails through stakeholders, through elected officials, email Tracy if you'd like to get on the Clayton County specific email list, but we um, definitely plan to keep you in the loop. With that, I'm gonna just have Mr. Rucker just talk 
com um, briefly about commuter rail as we get a lot of those questions from Clayton County residents just to give us an update on where we are with evaluating that process. Mr. Rucker. Uh, yes, Erica, I, I would say, and again, as I mentioned earlier, um, commuter rail is basically one of the, the, the many projects within the, the actual expansion plan down in Clayton County. So we have to go through a formal planning process to qualify for FTA grant funding. So we are in the midst of what I would call evaluating uh, the, what we call the, 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 preferred, the preferred options uh, or the alternative analysis is what they officially call that. So with the alternative analysis, it will give us uh, basically, criteria, we have to follow FTA criteria for basically evaluating different, um, different items within that analysis. We are in the midst of completing that analysis. And from that point, you know, we will then go into final, final planning for that job. We anticipate that that project will take up to about 10 years. So the planning process is, is scheduled from our master schedule to basically be completed within the next two years. And that's also inclusive of any environmental uh, consideration we have to go through as well as uh, basically working with the railroads. So I would close that in, in just saying we are in the midst of planning that project and we'll be giving more information as we negotiate that process. Okay, Frank, while we still have you, we got another question. Um, what are some of the challenges that you expect with implementing the recommended plans? Um, and it said, is the government on board and do we see any funding pitfalls? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. And the answer is yes. Now, now, just to be real, you know, COVID has impacted revenue. And, and transit won't recover as fast as society will. You know, so so basically, you know, while society may recover within the next, you know, couple of years, transit will probably be from a fair collection standpoint. If you utilize in transit, will probably be more in the range of five to seven. So so that will impact the the, the revenues collected, uh, not only fare box but also sales tax, which is the primary vehicle that you use to finance these projects. Um, you know, we can also look for the federal government potentially to reduce what its, what its participation levels will be. So, you know, it, it's going to be some challenging times, but, but again, we are optimistic um, that we can do most of this stuff. But we, 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 one thing people have to understand, at MARTA, we actually have to put together a fiscally constrained program, meaning that we have to not only be able to build it, with monies we have available from either from sales tax, grants, uh, or, or fare box, we also have to be able to operate the system. So, so you know, we continue to evaluate that, um, and, and revenue collection is a big thing, big part of that process. So, hopefully, I've answered that. Yes, thank you. And um, there was another question about federal or state funding to speed up. The, what could um, any state or federal funding speed up the delivery of these projects? And I think the answer is always yes, correct, Frank? Yeah, uh, but, um, and, and right now, we're targeting federal participation in some state, but these are very big projects. You know, if you start looking at the BRT project, you know, 17 miles of, of BRT in a state corridor we anticipate to build a project would be about $25 million per mile. So, so that project will be well over $400 million to do. Uh, the, the, the commuter rail project is estimated close to a billion dollars and, and all the other projects. Even, even to put a shelter in place costs us about 25,000 per shelter. So we're talking about a, a major expenditure of public money here. So we, we definitely would do diligence in planning this, this program out. Perfect. We're gonna wrap up. I do know that um, Tracy mentioned the um, Clayton County Advisory Group, which we um, refer to as the CAG. I just want to give the CAG an additional um, commendation for hanging in there with us, for meeting on a regular basis, helping us understand um, what's going on on the ground in Clayton County and being that voice from the community for us. 
And I also want to recognize our newly formed Writers Advisory Council from where we have some members of Clayton County on that um, council, and we're excited to have you involved. And as we wrap up, I just want to thank Frank, Tracy, and Jennifer for this presentation. And I do understand that we have some state elected officials on this call. I, um, I think Representative Schofield dialed in, and I wanna thank the staff at MARTA and the project team. And with that, I just w wish everyone a, sappy, a happy and safe weekend. Thank you all.